Welcome to the second half of the World War II Setting the Stage lecture. Yesterday we covered the key questions and vocabulary for this unit, as well as the Axis countries and why they were involved. Remember, the Axis countries are the countries that we fought against, and they include Italy, Germany, and Japan. Today we're going to cover the Allied powers, which are the countries of Russia, France, and Britain, as well as eventually the United States. Let's get started. Remember that our key questions are, why did each country involved in World War II join? And why was Hitler able to rise to power so easily? As a review, yesterday we discussed how the countries of Japan, Italy, and Germany were all going through major economic depressions and needed resources that drove them to go out into other countries. We also talked about how Japan and Italy in particular were being more aggressive in their approach and how their earlier invasions of countries made Hitler's softer invasions that were more accepted in society seem not so bad. Ironically, Russia was another country, even though it later became an ally, that was making Hitler look okay. In 1917, Russia had had its own communist revolution and tapped out of World War I, and they had been having issues ever since. In 1924, Stalin had taken over as a leader, which you all read about in your Common Lit article this week. That should have given you a pretty good idea of how terrible things were in Russia, especially with the collectives and the Great Purge. Stalin always felt, as you read about, that people were against him. And yet he somehow also believed that the Russian people were his children and he would provide for them, although his idea of punishment was to kill them if they didn't listen. And kill them he did. This is one of the reasons why everyone was so afraid of Stalin and Russia and not paying attention to Hitler. Already in the 30s, Stalin was killing people by the hundreds of thousands within his own country. So other countries couldn't imagine what he would do if he ever showed up at their door. This is a picture from the Great Purge, where people were literally just shot and left into trenches on any little suspicion that Stalin had about them. Even though Russia ends up being an ally at the end of World War II, in the beginning, they're one of the reasons that Hitler is able to rise to power almost unnoticed. Meanwhile, there's Britain and France. What were they doing? They were trying to pursue appeasement. The word appeasement means to try to calm someone down. And that's exactly what they saw their strategy as. They just wanted to keep all the nations calm. This was because they really wanted peace after World War I. No one wanted a repeat of that. But ironically, being afraid of doing another world war actually drove the next world war to be even worse because they delayed putting um, hedges up or barriers for people who were not doing what they should be doing. They also had a good reason to doubt alliances. The United States at this time had signed the Neutrality Acts, which we'll talk more about in a little bit. But basically they said, we're not going to be part of this war. And therefore Britain and France were worried that they wouldn't have enough backup. And last, they really misunderstood their threat. This picture is the perfect example of that. Here you have the British Prime Minister shaking hands with Adolf Hitler after the Munich Pact. They had basically just told him, well, you broke a rule, but it's all right. Now you behave, okay? And Hitler was like, sure I will. Everyone's smiling, everyone's happy. Because they think that they're appeasing. They're just keeping him under control. And really, what is he compared to the murders in Russia, the assaults in China from the Japanese, the Italians? and then even the Spanish who were having a civil war. They misunderstood what was coming with Hitler. In 1939, however, they found out and war began. This is when Germany ramped up. And this is what you'll see in your notes for this section. The first thing that happened is that Hitler broke the Munich Pact. This little handshaking episode didn't last very long. Right in the very next year, after he had told them all, okay, I won't do that again, but thanks for letting me keep the land, he was on the move and took over another piece of land. The reason he felt so confident to do this 
is because he shook someone else's hand too. And that is Stalin. Stalin and Hitler had secretly made the Nazi Soviet non-aggression pact. It's a super long name, but it has a simple meaning. Just look at each word. Nazi meaning Germany, Soviet meaning Russia. So Germany and Russia have a non-aggression, so they won't fight pact agreement. So they promise each other, we won't fight, is basically what it means. And the reason they did that, as you see in the cartoon, is because they said, together we'll invade Poland and split it. And that's what they were going to do, because each one wanted some of Poland's farmland. But as this cartoon also shows, with the idea of them holding guns behind their back, neither one liked or trusted the other. And later in the war, they're going to turn on each other. However, for the time being, it worked out for Hitler and he was able to invade Poland. The problem with this for Britain and France was they were allies with Poland. So as soon as Hitler invaded them, they mobilized to go to war, as this newspaper shows. Allies going to war because their ally was invaded. Does that sound familiar? It's World War I all over again. Despite their best attempts to prevent it, because they didn't have consequences for Hitler earlier on, and because they had made the German people so desperate with their reparations after World War I, they were in the exact same position again. This led to what's called the European spiral. In 1940, Hitler took Denmark and Norway in April, the Netherlands, Belgium, and Luxembourg in May, and then a large part of France in May and June. If you look at that, in three months, this man has taken over six countries. It's impressive no matter how you look at it and terrifying. And this is what leads the British and the French to get desperate. Looking at this map, everything in green is what Hitler took over in just three months once he felt confident that the Russians were gonna let him do whatever they wanted because they weren't gonna fight. When you look here, this is another reason he was confident. I've added green triangles where there were allies of Hitler. So you have up here the Russians who said, you can do whatever you want, just don't attack us. You have the Italians who have a dictator just like Hitler that gets along with him. And the Spanish, which have a dictator that Hitler himself helped put into place in the Spanish Civil War. That leaves only Britain and France fighting against him. Here you see a map of what France thought was its best hope. They thought they had learned from World War I and they had built a whole line of fortifications called the Maginot Line to defend from Germany if this ever happened again. Then they put all of the best British troops that came to help them right along this line. But Germany simply marched right around the Maginot Line through Belgium like they did in World War I and with all their force and all the technology that he had perfected in the Spanish Civil War pushed these people to the sea. That's where you get the story of Dunkirk. If you've ever heard of that or seen the movie, it was when all of the British civilians, okay, so like normal everyday people, not army people, had to bring their own personal boats out to save the British soldiers that were captured in the sea. And over 350,000 British soldiers were saved this way. But what that meant is France fell. Paris was taken and Britain was left alone. So where's the United States? What have we been doing this whole time? We've been pursuing isolationism, wanting to be left alone. We were occupied and worried with the Great Depression. As you can see with this, there were no jobs and even the Chamber of Commerce, which gives people jobs, was telling people, we can't help you right now. However, we did get kind of worried when Britain was the only one left. Because if Britain fell, there would really be nothing to stop Hitler from coming over here. So even though we had in the 1930s said we are neutral, we have the neutrality acts, and we're not going to help anyone, we made another act that gave us a little loophole to help Britain. And that's called the Lend-Lease Act. In 1941, when England was being pounded by Hitler and was the only one fighting back, we made this act that let us send them supplies. And so we sent Britain supplies as well as Russia later in the war and China who was still fighting Japan. 
but we still weren't completely involved. We were just helping out. It would take a direct attack on American soil for us to get involved. And that came in December 1941, when Pearl Harbor, our naval base in Hawaii, was bombed by the Japanese. You're going to read more about this a little later this week and see just what the point of bombing that specific place was for the Japanese and what they wanted to get out of it, but how we managed to survive and then fight back in the Pacific. So remember our key questions as we wrap up. Why did each country become involved? If you look back, the Axis countries, that's Italy, Germany, Japan, they're looking for resources or power. Russia itself was doing the same thing, even though it was an ally. Then you have France and Britain. Remember why they became involved? It was because of Poland and their treaty with Poland. So that was an alliance was the reason that they came in. And the United States, we become involved because our allies, Britain, are suffering a lot, but we're not fully involved until we're attacked. And that's when we actually send men and women to fight. Now, what about Hitler rising to power? Remember, Italy was invading Ethiopia. Japan was invading China. Russia was killing its own citizens, and Spain was fighting a civil war that was terrible. All of these things are going on before Hitler took over all these countries. And they really put a shadow on what he was doing and allowed him to get away with making weapons and getting ready and slowly taking little steps to test the waters and see what he was going to be allowed to get away with before he did his lightning strike like tour of Europe in three months. All right. Well, I hope that gives you a good overview. Please be careful to do the assignment that was listed under today in your assignment plan and make sure to let me know if you have any questions or concern. I hope I see you all tomorrow in our Zoom meeting at 10 a.m. on Wednesday. Thank you.